Mm, that's drunk. A few weeks ago, I posted a video about myths regarding the Super Nintendo, mostly dealing with stuff that had been accepted as fact over the years, like Hagane being a blockbuster exclusive, spoiler alert, it's not, or the existence of a 3D Mario prototype on Super Nintendo, spoiler alert, it never existed. What I didn't consider for that video, which was brought up in the comments and on Twitter, was the sheer amount of rumors that originated at school, or maybe something your friend made up, or maybe your friend's friend whose dad's second cousin's former roommate who worked at Squaresoft totally knows how to unlock General Leo as a playable character in Final Fantasy VI. I'm referring to those total nonsense rumors that took a life of their own and spiraled off into gobbledygook crazy talk. Everybody has their own BS rumors they'd been told as kids, so I'll just start with a couple of mine. One of the major ones for me was that Darth Vader was somehow an unlockable character in Super Empire Strikes Back, and it had to do with losing your battle against him in a way that would glitch the game, and he'd start the game over playing as Vader. This is, of course, total crap, but man, it was so fun to imagine. Back when this game came out, you never got to play as the bad guy, so daydreaming about this possibility was a lot of fun. Of course, there are plenty of cheat codes that can have Luke start with all the Force powers, or access the debug mode, or even skip straight to the Vader fight. And there's plenty of Game Genie codes out there too, but there was nothing that allowed you to play as Vader. Moving on, another schoolyard rumor I was subject to concerned Mega Man X. When you come to the end of the opening level, you face Vile for the first time, and it's a battle you're supposed to lose. Vile doesn't even have a health meter, but that of course didn't stop a certain annoying 6th grade kid in my school from bragging about how he actually defeated Vile and skipped the appearance of Zero altogether. This is of course total crap. Vile can kill you, albeit it would have to be kind of by accident, but you cannot defeat Vile at the beginning of the game. How do I know this is true? Well, for one thing, there's no evidence of it actually actually happening, and also it makes sense to lose to Vile because it introduces Zero and sets the story in motion, so it's easy to deduce that Vile would be made invincible to keep that chain of events in order. Speaking of Mega Man X, there's also some nonsense floating around out there about X being able to do a Hadouken. Well, pff, that sounds way too awesome to be real. There's no way that's... Actually 100% real and it's freaking badass as hell and anyone can do it. You have to have every heart upgrade, sub tank, and weapon and you have to head to the end of Armored Armadillo's level with 100% health and at least 5 lives. You jump dash above the door and promptly kill yourself 4 times in a row. The 5th time you head up there, you should see the upgrade capsule where you get the incredibly powerful Hadouken. You gotta be at full health to be able to use it, but you can pretty much just one shot bosses. It is incredibly badass. One of the most common rumors from back then involved the Super Nintendo version of Mortal Kombat and the infamous Blood Code. This existed in the Sega Genesis edition of the game, just press A-B-A-C-A-B-B, -A -B -B, or Abacab, after you boot up the game and you come to the screen that mysteriously references a code of some kind. Once that's entered, you get blood and uncensored fatalities unlocked. Even the Master System and Game Gear editions of the game had a blood code of some kind. The people that owned the Super Nintendo edition, however, were out of luck. Despite whatever rumors you've heard back then, there was no such blood code because there's nothing to unlock. The developers never put the uncensored fatalities in there in the first place. The best you can do on the SNES is use the Game Genie code that turns the gray quote-unquote sweat into blood, but it's just not the same, and plus the fatalities are still censored. I should mention that there's a ROM hack that's been made since that does a bit better of a job restoring the blood than the Game Genie does, but it's still kind of lame. Mortal Kombat was subject to a ton of rumors back then, and not just the blood code. For example, who's this mysterious guy who looks just like Scorpion in Sub-Zero, only he's wearing green? That's right, you can actually fight this dude in the arcade, Genesis, and Super Nintendo editions of the game. You have to be fighting at the pit in a one-player game, get a flawless victory in both rounds, and finish with a fatality. Then you move to the bottom of the pit to fight Reptile. That's pretty cool. Okay, it's clearly just a green palette swap using Scorpion and Sub-Zero's moves, but still, kinda neat. The rumors didn't end there though, soon enough there were stories about unlocking Reptile as a playable character, and unfortunately that's BS. We had to wait around until Mortal Kombat 2 for that. But yeah, there's all sorts of weird stuff that still surrounds the original Super Nintendo Mortal Kombat, everything from Goro being a playable character to a code that makes Sonya naked. Pretty ridiculous stuff, and none of it is based on fact. Maybe the most infamous fighting game rumor came courtesy of Electronic Gaming Monthly regarding Street Fighter 2. 
Now, this deals with the arcade game and not necessarily the Super Nintendo edition, but I still have to talk about it because it's just too funny. It all started with a mistranslation of Ryu's Shoryuken. When Ryu wins a fight, he's quoted in Japanese as saying, if you cannot overcome the Shoryuken, you cannot win. Because of a mix-up between Japanese characters and Chinese pinyin, the English arcade edition was translated to, you must defeat Sheng Long to stand a chance. Wait, what? Who the hell is that? Doubling down on the weirdness is the Super Nintendo instruction manual for Street Fighter 2 listing Ryu and Ken as students of Master Sheng Long. So, EGM humorously took that mistake and ran with it in an April Fool's prank in 1992, revealing a phony method to quote-unquote unlock Sheng Long in the arcade game, creating a method discovered by W.A. Stokens. Waste tokens, get it? Supposedly, if you don't take any damage in an entire playthrough using Ryu, just play M. Bison to a time limit draw, again without taking any damage, and repeat this M. Bison battle 10 times, and then Shang Long would appear from nowhere and toss Bison out of the way and fight Ryu himself. This, of course, spread like wildfire since Street Fighter 2 was so dang popular, but a couple months later, EGM revealed that they made it all up. They did a similar stunt for April Fools in 1997 when discussing Street Fighter 3, this time going as far as providing artwork and screenshots. People still clamor for Sheng Long, and there's multiple fan-made videos floating around out there depicting what he would look like and how he would play, but make no mistake, there was never a Sheng Long in the original Street Fighter 2. Another rumor that's persisted for years involves Final Fantasy VI. Now, if you haven't played this game, you might want to skip ahead to the next part of the video at around 8 minutes 10 seconds, because there's some spoilers here. Ready? Okay. Toward the middle of the game, a non-playable character named General Leo is killed by the main villain, Kefka. There's been a rumor floating around for years that General Leo can be revived if you do something ridiculous like kill 4,000 dragons in the forest east of Gao's house, which makes a golden dragon appear and drop what's called a revive potion or some resurrection ability, and you go to Leo's grave and revive him. This is all nonsense. Leo's definitely not a playable character, and he definitely can't be revived, because none of that stuff can be found in any of the programming code, as pointed out by by many Final Fantasy fans over the years on all sorts of forums, ranging from GameFAQs to old Final Fantasy forums from way back. There is no Golden Dragon in the monsters list of the game coding, and there is no Revival Potion. They just simply don't exist. You would actually have to modify the game's code itself to make this happen. So yeah, this rumor is BS. But thanks to Dandy Roddick on Twitter for bringing it up. One Final Fantasy VI rumor that's actually not BS, however, is that... Okay, again, there's more spoilers here. Skip to 810 if you don't want to hear this. Ready? Okay. You can actually save Sid from dying. Thanks to Sir Chadley OC on the SNES Trunk Discord for bringing this one up. When Sid is on his deathbed and you're playing as Celis, Sid will actually have an unseen health counter that goes down anytime you're not on the world map. So just spend as little time in the house as possible and keep bringing Sid fish. It usually takes about 10 or 12 to save him, and they can't be slow moving or rotten fish either, or that'll just decrease his health. They have to be medium or fast moving fish. Once Sid is feeling better, he'll get up and open the door to the raft and he just hangs out outside and watches you leave. I just thought that was kind of a neat touch. Finally, I want to end with one that happened to me as a kid, and I was able to recreate the same thing recently. Even if you don't care for sports games, I think you'll get a kick out of this one. Alright, so when you're a kid playing a game by yourself and you die or get defeated or whatever or under some dubious circumstances, what's your first thought? It's that the computer cheated, right? This was especially common thinking in sports games, at least in my experience, where the computer AI just decided it had enough of me winning, so I'd inexplicably drop the ball or something like that. It was BS, of course, but it was nothing outside of the actual rules of the game. But one day when I was finishing my season in Madden 95, I was playing a playoff game and I was comfortably ahead running out the clock, and the computer keeps calling timeout to stop the clock so they can get the ball back. Makes sense, that's normal behavior. But then the computer runs out of timeouts and it starts calling teams? What in the hell is that? Los Angeles calls Oakland? What, are they gonna make a last second trade or something? And they still count it as timeouts and stop the clock. Seriously, the computer called Carolina, Jacksonville. It just decided right then and there to just use as many timeouts as it wanted. I still ended up winning the game, but it was hilariously strange and it proved to me a theory that I've long had since I I was a kid. Sometimes the computer really does cheat. And with that, I want to thank you for watching, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.